now we are going to start working with search functionality first let me open postman i will come to get all products click on send and from here i will copy this product id and inside the single product i am just going to paste that id i will click on send successfully i am able to get this complete data now i am able to get product detail inside this we are having this params option which stands for parameters inside this key i will be passing keyword and inside this value i will be passing shirt now inside this url if you see after the product id i am having question mark and after that i am having this key and then i am having this value so inside this url after this question mark whatever we are having it is called as query let me copy this complete url and inside this product controller here above this i will be pasting and commenting so this is my complete url and after this question mark whatever we are having it is nothing but our query now what we will do we are going to create separate file inside this utils i will be creating one file api functionality dot js and this functionality we are creating for searching if you want to do filtering or if you want to apply some pagination entire logic we are going to write in this file for that i will be creating class i will give the class name as api functionality you can give any name inside this i will pass this constructor method in which i will be passing two arguments first i will pass query and then i will pass query string in short i will write query str then this properties we have to assign to instance which we will be creating from this class for that we will write this dot query which will be equal to query separate by comma then this dot query str is equal to query str i will come to product controller here i am having this url in url after this question mark we call this as query but inside this mongodb this query will be representing this query like how we are passing here product dot create or product dot find so this query will be representing that query and this query str will be representing this complete data so this is my query str and this whatever queries we are passing that is nothing but my query but in url after question mark this complete thing is called as query but in this functionality this query str is this complete thing and this query is nothing but our mongodb query keep this in mind before proceeding with the code after this i am just going to export this class for that i will write export default api functionality now i will come to product controller i will just come to get all products and here inside this function i am just going to create new instance of that class i will write api functionality as soon as i hit enter this file will be imported from this api functionality.js let me just come down and inside this what we have to pass we have to pass two arguments first is the query our query is nothing but product dot find so here i will just copy this entire thing and inside this i am going to paste then second we have to pass query str for that inside this request we will have property query so from this request we are going to access property called query first let me just log this value i will write here log inside this 
I will be passing request dot query, and this one I am just going to comment. I will come here. I will come to get all product. Inside this, I will be passing keyword, and then here I will be passing shirt. Click on send. My request is being sent. Come here. I will open console. Now you can see this entire thing will be passed inside this query. And using this request dot query, we are able to access complete query from the URL. And inside URL, after question mark, this is called as query. But inside this API functionality, this query string will be having access to this complete query. So from this request dot query, we can easily access that string. I will remove this entire thing, and I'm just going to uncomment this. And then this entire value, I'm just going to assign to the variable. I will give the variable name as API functionality. So in this way, we have created instance of API functionality inside that. We are passing query and we are passing query string. Below this, let me just lock this API functionality. And this entire thing, I'm just going to comment. I will come, click on send. Come here. I will open console. Now you can see this is nothing but my query string for which I am having keyword as shirt. Why I am having query string? Because inside this API functionality, our property is nothing but query string. Then this is our product dot find, and this is nothing but our query. And inside that, whatever methods, whatever model, okay, entire data related to that query will be displayed. And this is nothing but my query. And this query is nothing but property which is present inside the class but here the query which we are passing here that is nothing but property which is present in our request object now i will remove this entire thing i'm just going to uncomment now i will come to api functionality inside this class we are going to pass our first method that is nothing but search now, as I mentioned, this query string was giving us the object. Again, let me come here. Below this, I will be writing log. Inside this, I will be passing request.query. Save it. Come here. I will click on send. I will just open inspect. I will come down. Now you can see this is nothing but my object. And this query string is nothing but complete object inside which I will have keyword and the value is shirt. So inside this search, I will be creating one variable. I will give the variable name as keyword. And how I can access this keyword from this dot query str. This is going to give me complete object. And from that object, I will access this keyword. Inside this keyword, we are having this value shirt. So that value will be assigned to this keyword. Let me save. I will come to product controller. Whenever we are working with MongoDB, if I just want to find the product with particular name, what we will do? Inside this find, we will pass the object. And here, we will pass the field name. Field name, I will be passing name. And for product name, we have always given product 1, product 2, product 3, and it keeps on going. I will save. Come here. I will click on send. Now you can see I am not having the name product, but if I give product 1, click on save. I will send here. Whichever product is having the exact same name, I am able to get only that product. But maybe whenever we are doing search, I will be having product 1, I will be having product 2. And whenever I write product, I should be having all the products with that name. So I will remove this entire thing.
So in this way, we will be passing if we just want to find that particular data. So here, I will not be passing this name field. Instead, what we will do, we will come to this API functionality. Inside this, we will be passing ternary operator. If I'm having the keyword in my URL, then what I have to do, I just have to search name field. I will write here name. And inside this, I will be passing this regex. Okay, this is nothing but regular expression. And inside this, I will pass this complete string. I will copy and here I will be pasting. So whatever value I will be having, I'm just going to pass inside this regex. And then I will separate by comma. Here, I will be passing another property options. And for this, I will assign the value i, which means doesn't matter if I am writing laptop or if I am writing laptop, it will be case insensitive. And even if I do like this, then also I will be having the result for laptop. Okay, if I am having keyword, then only using name field, I am just doing the research. And here I will be writing curly braces. And I'm just going to close curly brace. If I'm not having any keyword, then simply I will be returning this empty object. So using this name field, I'm just going to search for the product. Like how I have passed object and inside that I have passed name. Same thing I'm doing. If I'm having the keyword, then I will be searching for the name. And I will be performing case insensitive search. And whatever keyword value I am having, that I will assign to this regex. For example, this dot query dot keyword is giving me the value laptop. Then complete laptop will be assigned to this regex. Now this entire keyword value we have to assign to our query. And here this query is nothing but the queries which we have passed here. So what we will do? Below this, I will write this dot query will be equal to this dot query. Then we will be writing our find method like how we are passing here find method. Inside this, I'm just going to spread out my keyword. Why? Because here, if I'm having any keyword, then I will come inside this true statement and it is nothing but object. And inside that object, I am having name. So I am just going to spread out this name. Later on, if you want to search by description or if you want to search by category, then accordingly, you can separate by comma. You can give description and you can keep on going. And inside this find, I am just going to spread out my keyword. Then finally, if I just want to change this method here, simply, I'm just going to do return this. Very important. If you do not do, then we will not be able to change the methods. Now, once it is done, below this, I'm just going to lock keyword. I will come to product controller. I will remove this entire console. Now, this is our class in which we have passed this two arguments. Now, here, I'm just going to do search. Okay. Inside this search, what I have done, I have just returned this new query. Now, I will save this. Come here. Now, if I click on send, you can see nothing happens. Let me just inspect. Now, inside this keyword, what I am getting, I am having name. Inside that, I am having regex. And for this, I am having the value shirt and then I am having option i. But here in my result, I am having all the product, but for each and every product, we are having the name as product. We are having the name as product one, product two. Nowhere we are having shirt and in our result, we are getting all the products. But in our console, successfully we are able to access that keyword and also we are able to access that name. 
Now I will come to product controller. Inside this API functionality, let me just change the spelling. Inside this API functionality, we have already written product.find. Again, we do not have to write here. I will remove this. Instead, I will be passing API functionality. Here I will be writing await. And then from here, I am just going to access query property. And our query is nothing but this we have already passed. So from this API functionality, we are just accessing this query. Now I am going to save. Come here, click on send. Now you can see with this keyword, I am not having any product. So I will have empty array. But here I will be passing product. Click on send. Successfully, I will be having all the result. Why? Because inside this product, we are having product name. And after that, we are having the number. Now I will come to create new product. Inside this, let me just give here mobile. Here I will write description 6, price 600, ID 600, URL 6. And then finally, I will be giving the category as mobile. I will click on send. This product is created. Now I will come to get all products. Inside this, I will pass the keyword. And here I will be passing mobile. I will click on send. Now you can see, even if I give in lower case, successfully I am able to access that product. Here I am having name mobile. So that is the reason I am able to access only one product. So very important you understand this complete thing. So for this functionality, we have created separate file. And inside that, we have created this class. Using this, we can easily perform all the functionalities like searching the product, filtering the product, as well as we can apply pagination. And then inside this product controller, we are creating instance of the class, then we are passing query, and then we are passing this query string. And inside this search functionality, we are finding the keyword. If we are having the keyword only for name field, we are accessing, we are searching for the keyword and we are doing case insensitive search. If we are not having the keyword, then simply return empty object. From here, I will remove this lock. Then once we are having this, we are just updating our query and inside that query, we are passing this complete thing. Like how? While creating inside this, we will be passing object, then we will be passing name, and after that, we will be passing value. Same thing, we are just updating our query. Similar way, we are just updating the query this.query.find, and inside that, we are going to pass this data. And inside that, with whatever field we want to search for the data, we are just passing that data by spreading out the keyword. Later on, we have to change the method. So we will be writing return this. Inside this, we are already passing the query. So again, we do not have to pass. Instead, whatever new query we are having, from this API functionality, we are accessing the query and we are just assigning to that product. I will come here. I will remove this entire thing. Now, I am not having any keyword. So it will be returning empty object. If I am having empty object, then simply it is just going to return all the product which I am having in my database. So here, if no keyword, it will be returning empty object. And inside this, I will not be having anything. And it is going to find all the products. So we have not changed the logic. Only thing we have changed is the way of writing the query.